This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Fun Runs. Nobody's going to know. Right. They're going to know. How would they know? They're not going to know. You know, if anything, you should encourage your kids to play D&D because it means that they're going to save virgins. Classy is like one of those things like famous. Right. Where if you have to say you are, Mm -hmm. you're not. I'm peanut butter and you are jelly and we're so happy on our little piece of bread. IFAF, Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Coming up, a really big shoe. Oh, like Shaq's? Yes. <laughs> a movie called IF that's not about Idaho Falls. Oh, that's a bummer. It is. We'll go down a rabbit foot's rabbit hole. Oh, some mad <laughs> props for the city of Idaho Falls. In Iona, what's that smell? We'll talk about a couple of fun runs. Oh, like a ton of fun runs? ton of fun runs. Also, <laughs> an Idaho baseball team you'll want to see called the Idaho Taters. What's that all about? So I'm wondering in retrospect, did I get sick and then a week went by and I was fine and then I got sick again? Or was it the same cold flu thing and I tried to do too much? You know, you were really adamant about getting up and getting to it sooner than I thought was acceptable but that's just me and and that's what i hear like if you don't sort of recover even though you're fine if you don't recover from the cold and or flu Mm -hmm. fully then uh you run the risk of getting sick again right like i saw somebody post it's just it's just more of the same with this thing right and i wonder yeah you you have to be more i had to be more slow and gentle with myself getting (laughs) out of this hole Right. Eh. Well, and you know what sucks too? So in my new job, I work with kids more often than I have in a long time. And because of that, because kids are just Petri dishes with feet, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have been getting sick a lot since I took this new job, which is really frustrating because it looks so bad. I wonder if I'm... Well, I think that you're sort of collateral damage. A beneficiary of that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think you're just the collateral damage, you know, because I go to this job and deal with kids all day and then I get sick and then I come and I see you and I'm like, hey, how's it going? Give you a hug. And then you get sick, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're all going through it. Hope you're doing well. Well, and now that it's warming up, hopefully it won't be happening as much. Yeah. You know, uh, speaking of collateral damage, I am loving, we alluded to this a couple episodes ago. Hey, what? Wait, what? This is more than a January thaw Mm -hmm. we're having, especially now that it's coming into February as well. Um, Oh, the uh, used to be LaBelle Ice Palace, and now it's just oh. Ice Palace, Idaho, mm-hmm. had to close for the season. I know, which is so sad, because I really did want to go, and I still haven't gone. It just wasn't warm enough to keep it... Wasn't cold enough? <laughs> sorry. It just wasn't cold <laughs> enough to keep it plausible, mm-hmm. and that sucks. That does suck. You know, though, at this point, they've got the lake right there. They need to do what the snow hill does and get themselves some snow machines. I'm so glad you said that. Um, And not snow machines that go vroom, 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 vroom over the snow. Right. But go and make the snow. Yes. But they also have the ice. They have structures Mm -hmm. made of ice that need to stand. Right. And when it's 40, I couldn't believe it when my Mm -hmm. car said it was 40. Right. My car actually broke character and said, Mm -hmm. dude, it's 40. You know, uh, this week was one of the first weeks that I actually got a Google notification telling me that the, the weather was going to be really bad. Like, I get some Google notifications for the weather. Oh, yeah. But they're all really, like, mild. But this one, it was like, hey, bad weather ahead. Like, urgent weather. And I was like, what? This has never happened. And I look out, and that was the day that it, it had snowed really, really heavy. Okay. Maybe that was two weeks ago. Yeah. But, you know, and now all of a sudden, it's gone again. And that's honestly... So, we're talking... And, and by the way, we're so sorry... Uh, Ice Palace, Idaho, and really smart move on the part of both the Ryder Park or Gateway Parks, Mm -hmm. uh, Sled Hill, and um, Idaho Falls Snow Park Mm -hmm. for getting those snowmaking machines. Yeah, definitely. Whatever global warming, climate change, whatever it is we attribute, El Nino, whatever Mm -hmm. it is we attribute it to, I sure am enjoying it. Right. I sure am enjoying driving on roads that don't suck i have been going through um what do you call it what am i doing here what am i doing uh let's play what's mike doing oh he's pouring (laughs) antifreeze uh, 
uh, windshield washer fluid into his. Uh, okay, yeah, I would have never guessed that. <laughs> it's like beetle. You know juice? how when you go like this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the windshield wiper <laughs> fluid goes everywhere. <laughs> do you mean? Do you mean poor windshield? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, and uh, it's funny. So I went to Winco to get some more, and the lady said, "You don't want these." I said, what do you mean? She said, these are the summer ones. She said, I've been trying to talk to Winco about this because it was like, no, you need, you mm-hmm. need the under, at least under 40 rated. Right. Well, especially in Idaho. Fluid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but hey, Winco, if you're an employee owned company, <laughs> you listen to your employees. Yeah. She knows what she's talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know, I love Winco. Oh yeah. Of course. You have a t-shirt that says it. I do. I'll you know, wear it one episode. So. But for the Ice Palace, I just had a brilliant idea. All right. So what they need to do is they need to get one big metal plate. Like big, like 20 by 20 feet, something like that. However, however big the base of the Ice Palace is, I don't know how big it is. I've never been oh, there. Oh, so. and get it from Cold Stone Creamery. Right, basically. <laughs> like like they need to be able to cool it. And then what they also need to do is they need to get some sort of translucent dome to help hold the cold in. So it'll have to be reflective on the outside so that it will re- you know, refract the sun, but also help keep all the cold inside. And then that way, you'll also feel like you're in a snow globe. You know, they can do it in Dubai. <laughs> right. Yeah, if they can do it in Dubai, why can't they do it in Idaho? Because we don't have oil money. Well, yeah, We don't have that. shake money. We don't have flying you know, cars. And we don't have the Burj Khalifa. Uh, we got Idaho russet potato money, though, baby. That's right. I mean, that goes to every McDonald's in the entire world. That's right. But then we'd have to get every <laughs> farmer in the area to contribute to the Ice Palace. And mm-hmm. I love your idea of it looking like a snow globe. Like, make it snow. Yeah. Instead of make it rain at a strip club, it'd be make <laughs> it snow at an Ice Palace. I love it. I think that sounds Great like analogy. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant analogies. Copyright 2024, Mike I and Carly. Like, I feel like they're going to use that on their next billboard. Yeah. It feels so family friendly. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah. <laughs> make it snow. Daddy said make it rain. Mommy said make it snow. <laughs> <laughs> and we're off. That won't be the last inappropriate joke this show. So sorry, Ice Palace, Idaho. And uh, thank you, one Todd Wood. Can we get right to this? Sure. Todd Wood is both a pastor and servant. Which, hear me out, I thought was a Depeche Mode song. (laughs) He's a pastor at Providence Downtown, Mm -hmm. helping the homeless. And he's a servant at Idaho Falls Rescue Mission. Or uh, maybe I have that wrong, Todd, because I looked at your bio. I stalked Mm -hmm. your bio for about 10 seconds. (laughs) Todd, if you remember, was a former pastor at Berrien Baptist Church Mm -hmm. and former schoolmate of mine at Gethsemane Christian School. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we... Both went our separate ways. Think I made that joke before. <laughs> right, right. But he's he's shared, he's been this weird ally of ours. And and here's what I mean by weird. He's a pastor. <laughs> right. We make dick jokes. Yeah. Well, you know, love the sin or hate the sin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess so. So he actually, um, we were talking about an event that I want to get to. And can I also mention, I actually really love Idaho Falls Rescue Mission. Yes. It's one of my favorite um, charitable organizations in town. And as a matter of fact, back when I worked at a retail shop here in town, every winter we would do a big sock drive where anytime someone would buy a pair of socks or would donate a dollar, we would actually donate. They would match the amount of socks donated and they donate those to a local shelter through corporate. And that was the one that we gave the socks to back when I was manager because I was like, no. They need it. That's that's a place to go. So Todd and I were talking about this event he's got coming up with the Idaho Falls Rescue Mission. And I said, dude, we'll totally give it a plug on our very low listen to podcast. So please don't get your hopes up. And I, But I've seen him share our show a couple of times. Okay, that's pretty nice. Anyway, I said, by the way, bro, thank you so much for sharing that. And he said something unexpected. He was like, you know what? I love your perspective. It's different than the typical mainstream perspective, I'm paraphrasing here, Uh in Idaho Falls. And I I thought, thank you, exactly. That's exactly what we're going for. You get me, bro. We're so (laughs) counterculture. I mean, not even counterculture, just not the smiling, bleached 
white teeth talking mm-hmm. heads yeah. that, that have to be polite as mm-hmm. if their job depended on it because it does. Right, right. You know what? That's a great point because no one depends on us. Just us. I hope you don't depend on us. <laughs> you can depend on us. I hate slogans like that. Like, I know. Like, you can trust us. You should trust us. There's the whole Has Been Hotel episode right. about how you can trust us. Sounds yeah. disingenuous and mm-hmm. creepy. Mm-hmm. And, and you know what? Let's go here. If we have to say you can trust us... If we, I saw a Real Housewives of uh, whatever county, uh-huh. the trashiest one, probably New Jersey, <laughs> once, where she, uh, a woman got up. Was it the famous dinner table one where she <gasps> where got she up? she throws her leg? Maybe. Oh, I love that And says something <laughs> like, I'm classy. I'm classy. <laughs> and if you, classy is like one of those things like famous. Right. Where if you have to say you are, mm-hmm. you're not. Yep. I'm famous. Don't you know who I am? Obviously not. Sorry, bro, I don't. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But that whole, the whole telling people who you are, here's what we'd rather do. We'd rather you make your own judgments about us. Mm -hmm. You might go, "Eh, done, sorry. At some point. I wouldn't blame them. We might say. Not everyone's cup of tea. Yeah. You might, we might piss you off forever. Mm -hmm. I hope not. Yeah. But, but I think by drawing that sort of clear line in the sand where we swear and make dick jokes, mm-hmm. um, y- you know what you're going to get and you either like it or you don't. Right. And that doesn't make a difference to us. Mm-hmm. We still love you, though. Yeah. So halo emoji We love and everything. the sinner and the sin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I saw a meme. Let's get sacrilegious just for a second. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Jesus was looking down on earth and he was like, oh, hell yeah. These are the sins I died for. <laughs> Honestly, but, though, yeah. But if you think about it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's accurate. They are. <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> you know, oh, some man. would argue that if you don't sin, you're actually worse because you made it so that Jesus died for nothing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of right, God. Right. And and now I feel bad about it. <laughs> I'm trying to get better. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, realistically, I like I really do believe in goodness for goodness sake. Whether there is a yes. reward behind it or not, I think that the best thing that we as people can do is be kind and good to each other. And I'm also here for the jokey jokes, so. I mean, if we're going to go all the way down the rabbit hole, and thank you for quoting, um, so be good for goodness sake, you better watch out, you better not cry. Don't do that. It's after Christmas. Pout. You know, you know, you know my policy. Jesus Christ is coming <laughs> again. Okay. Okay, that was Enough actually, of that. you know what, that was actually seasonally appropriate because Easter's coming up. That's right. Yeah. That's all right, right. You fixed it. Okay, <laughs> there I fixed it. <laughs> Are you following the There I Ruined It account on Insta? I love the There I Ruined It guy. <laughs> Are you a music lover? If the first one isn't true and the second one is true, go there now. Are you a jokey joke lover? If so, still go. <laughs> You're a poet. Yeah, I know, Do thank you. Do you know it? <laughs> I do know it. Speaking of Instagram oh, accounts, here's our... This is a fantastic Instagram to follow if you like baseball. Oh, yeah. It's baseball isms. Mm-hmm. And the guy, okay, the guy loves baseball so much that get this. And we were just talking about Greg Hale last week and his Idaho Falls A's shirt. Right. Uh huh. We've talked. Have we talked about this shirt yet? We have not yet. Okay, we'll get there. We still need to. We're, we've bookmarked Todd Woods' event that we want to talk about. Oh, yeah. But let's go <laughs> through all these little sidebars first. Yeah. Why not? Baseballisms has this hat. Check it out. And what you're looking at here is a potato. Sort of, sort of a mad-looking sports mascot potato. Mm-hmm. Very Spud Kings-esque. With, yes, with motion lines mm-hmm. coming at you like he's angry and he's going to get you. <laughs> and this is a baseball cap for the Idaho Taters, mm-hmm. which is a baseball team that doesn't exist. The reason he's doing this, I think, 
is he loves baseball so much that he's created these little farm league teams Mm -hmm. that he can do the artwork for, that he can name, and he won't, it won't uh, attract the ire of Major League Baseball. Right. I like that. Although he He doesn't have to get express consent. Right. Although he should have gone with Teton Taters. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be better. And, and maybe we make our own. <laughs> there Ma- we go. <laughs> maybe we do the Teton Tater Tots. <laughs> oh, cute. It's the, it's the T-Ball League. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right? Cute. That's cute. Come up with a... How, yeah, how <laughs> didn't I think of that for Teton T-shirts? Yeah, I know. Come up with a, with a series, even, of fictional sports teams. <laughs> so... Um, So I ordered not the hat, but the T-shirt. It'll be here soon. We'll show it off on this show. What a clever, funny, creative idea for what I assume is a graphic design person who loves baseball. That's pretty cool, honestly. And what a nice way to sort of mesh his two passions. Exactly. Now, speaking of T-shirts, though, can we talk about your Teton T-shirt? Let's give this a plug because it's not a Pulp Fiction shirt, believe it or not. (laughs) Um, this is what you think it is. It, it's designed to look as if the wearer is a Mormon missionary. <laughs> it's a white shirt with a black tie and a name badge. Uh-huh. The name badge says, um, unofficial ambassador, the city of Idaho Falls, Department of Smart Asses, or something like that. <laughs> right, yeah. It is available at tetontshirts.com. If you wear it with a black jacket, you're covering up half the name badge. Nobody's going to know. Right. They're going to know. How would they know? They're not going to (laughs) know. Thank you for the assist on that. You're welcome. You're welcome. We just think it's cute. The name of the shirt online is On a Mission. (laughs) Oh, cute. I love that. Yeah. (laughs) You know, I actually had uh, some sister missionary stuff at my house the the other day. And the funny thing is there were three of them, which is not how they usually, yeah, that's not how they operate. They usually travel two by two. Yeah. As if onto Noah's Ark. Yeah. Or what's that nursery rhyme that goes two by two, hurrah, hurrah. I mean, I remember it from the the movie Ants. Okay. If you remember that. And that's also the tune to Johnny Comes Marching Home Again. So what am I thinking? I no idea. What do they say in Ants? The ants come marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. That's the song. Yeah, Yeah. that's the song. Yeah. So anyway, I I could picture somebody saying to me, are you trying to impersonate a Mormon missionary? (laughs) And I would say, look, if an LDS missionary t-shirt that looks like this fools you into thinking that I'm an actual LDS missionary, then you probably think a tuxedo t-shirt could be James Bond. (laughs) You know? Right. Well, and realistically, like if you had a lanyard on, you'd look like you were a health inspector or something. Right. You know? Right. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Back to Todd Woods thing. (laughs) I wonder if the whole time he's been like, we didn't mention the thing. We're going to mention the thing. We're going to mention the thing. He has put on this, uh, and I don't know why I have my notes in two places for this one. He's put on... A Walk in the Cold, Saturday, March 23rd. So you got some time for this. Mm -hmm. It's a walk or run for the hungry, homeless, and hopeless. And I just love that he cares so much. Me too. A fundraising effort to help the Idaho Falls Rescue Mission. Again, Saturday, March 23rd. You can be a walker. You can be a runner. As the title Mm -hmm. suggests, $35 registration. Get you an event t-shirt, sponsor grab bag, one raffle ticket. Now, let's talk about this yeah, raffle. Quick question, though. Yeah. Can you just donate without running? Because kind of yes. like the polar plunge. Yes, and I'm this betting. This is another thing uh-huh. where I'm like, meh. I'm betting you can do that at walkinthecold.com. Oh, great. Okay, good. And like we were saying, you know, with the housing crisis as it is, this is such an important mission that he's on. So yeah. if you have the money and if you love this community... You know, he's give what on you can. a mission and he's wishing someone could cure his lonely condition. <laughs> Looking for walkers in all the right places. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> you tried your best. It's okay. It's hard to freestyle. Here's what's in this raffle. It's like the ultimate entertainment package. Listen to this. It, um, it has a 75 inch Samsung 4k UHD. Ooh, I could s- use one of those smart TV soundbar, PlayStation five and more. Again, it's a benefit for the Idaho Falls Rescue Mission, and it's happening at the waterfront at Snake River Landing, March 23rd. The time is 11 for walkers, 11.30 for runners. Nice. 
So we'd love I like to that see- walkers get a head start. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before the runners come blazing past them. <laughs> right. right. We'd love to see you there. We think it's a worthy cause run by an ultra worthy man. Oh, yeah. And while we're doing walks, can we talk about Ammon's other weird walk that's coming up? <laughs> yeah. Who's in charge? Who is their ministry of silly walks? <laughs> uh, more like, who's the sadist on the team? <laughs> who's like, let's make people suffer. Do you <laughs> remember? Genuinely. Last fall, <laughs> Ammon did a nagathon. Oh, oh, it, it makes my stomach hurt just thinking about it. And I'm not even lactose intolerant. There were plenty of people who apparently had a good time. <laughs> so they've decided to up the game a little bit with the Ammon Duck Donut-thon. I mean, I will say it doesn't have <laughs> as nice of a ring to it, but... I love me a duck donut. It certainly <laughs> um, includes running and then consuming something. Consuming lots of carbs and lots of sugar. Oh, it's going to sit in your gut like a brick, dude. Well, I don't know. You've seen those long distance runners and the, and people are like, instead of glasses of water, they're handing them slices of pizza and they're eating them. Oh, yeah. I guess that's true, huh? Like that's okay. You know, that's why Michael Phelps was able to consume 20,000 calories a day. That's true. Is because he was swimming back and forth oh, man. in lower than body temperature water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You uh, you can sign up to be a little ducky and run one mile for one donut. <laughs> okay, that's kind of cute. A hungry ducky is three miles for three donuts. <laughs> a crazy ducky, six miles for six donuts. And finally, a ducky beast. Oh, <laughs> 13 miles, 13 donuts. 13? That's like a half marathon, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know anything. I know so much about marathons. I run a marathon every <laughs> summer. Of course I know that that's half a mar- No, I don't know anything about marathons. I don't know how long a half marathon yeah. is. <laughs> that's half a marathon. That's funny. Oh, my gosh. But okay. think of all the donuts. <laughs> well, I-, I know that I can walk a mile conservatively in 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. That's got to reflect poorly on me, but that's the truth, and I'll admit it for right. wh- whatever. I-, I get it. I do. Would I walk a mile for a donut? You bet your ass I would. I mean, for a duck donut, I would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then I'd Do feel like- Do you get to pick your donut? The nice thing is I'd feel like I earned it by the time I got done. Yes. So I'd be like, mm, I can have the whole donut instead of just half. <laughs> but that's- a, Yeah, right. But that's the sort of, uh, not paradox, but um, catch 22 or gotcha of working out. Mm-hmm. So many people, human nature- including me. Oh, yeah. So many people are like, I've been so good for so long, it's time to be just a little bit naughty. <laughs> I feel I feel like in my life, if I keep my ratio to 80% good and 20% naughty, I've nailed it. That's pretty good for you. Uh, yeah, yes. For me <laughs> is a very important qualifier there. I feel like you're usually 20% good and 80% naughty. Hey, now. <laughs> my last office job, they were obsessed with duck donuts. That and like the Mormon Starbucks. You know, they always yeah, had the, a pick me up or a pop shop or something in their hand. Pop and then we, shop, fizz, biz, <laughs> thirst right. burst, hip sip. Yeah. And then we'd always get uh, duck donuts too, uh, to the point where I, at some point, I was like, you know what, man? I can't keep eating all of the sweets and stuff that they bring in. I can't take a whole donut for me because that's just too many calories, especially because most of the time I'm either sitting at a desk or sitting in front of a patient. So I was like, you know what, man? I'm just going to like cut this thing in half. Yes. And I became... That annoying office chick that would take a little butter knife and not touch the other ha- the other half, by the way. So anyone who took my half, you're welcome. But I would take my half, I'd hold it, and then I'd cut it with a butter knife, and I'd leave the other half there for someone else. Because I know that there are other people who only want one half of a donut, dang it. We've talked about how I, we're learning now mm-hmm. that American portions are out of control. Oh, yeah. Not, not just a little much. Mm-hmm. Out of con- obscenely out of control. And we, we've done a bad thing and we ought to feel bad about it. Well, and we do. So I think... I, I feel bad. <laughs> I don't think you were the office annoyance. I think you were the office inspiration. Maybe. Probably not. But just in general, like, I remember before I was that person seeing cut in half pastries and being like, well, why would you do that? <laughs> I don't want what you touched. Now you I know. I don't trust you. <laughs> and that's growth, Carl. Right. Yeah, you know what? Now I have a better, more empathetic perspective. And I understand that this person was trying to not be wasteful, but also recognized their limitations. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Thank you. Oh, man, I feel so good. <laughs> Thanks, Duck Donut Thon. 
Do you want to go share a duck donut? <laughs> I think, yeah, no, I really want one. That sounds really good. So registration is open. The event is May 18th. Mm. We'll see you there. Can I do a half mile for a half donut? Brilliant. Brilliant. I think I should get to do that. May, okay. What if <laughs> we both do a half mile and you pick the donut? Because you know I don't care. Oh. And, and we'll split it down the middle. I love that. It'll either be there. Can it, can it be a relay? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> but we we use the donut as the relay and we split it in half yes, as we go. <laughs> instead of passing the torch, we pass the donut. I love that idea. I think that's brilliant. And it's kind of like a wishbone too, because whoever gets the biggest, the bigger half. Oh yeah, because it'll be in a hurry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One's holding it out. Yeah, there's no butter knife the in the office. <laughs> it's just yeah. It's just a, okay, Mike. Here I come. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's exactly how it should right. work. <laughs> now, realistically, it'll either be their blueberry one or their uh, maple bacon one. Okay. Because those two were the best. I vote maple bacon. Right. Thank yeah. you. We haven't even done follow-ups yet. So, uh, <laughs> We've gotten so distracted by donuts. <laughs> editor got lazy. So let's just, let's just do a quick um, three-person follow-up dump. I love it. If people don't mind being included in a dump. <laughs> when, <laughs> when that sounds I, like every terrible dream I have. <laughs> when, <laughs> when I included Don Jarrett in the Reed's Dairy stuff last week, look at him. Here he is with sweet Alan Reed. They're holding up a shirt saying, I'm on fire with Reed's Dairy. Oh, that's funny. <gasps> I didn't see the shirt. Hilarious. Right. We missed we missed a lot of stuff last last episode, so we're making up for it this episode. Mm -hmm. Um here's a picture of us. Do you have something to say about that? I'm just gonna say I'm so glad that they're making fun of it, so now we can do Right, right. It's and and you know what? What can you do? <laughs> right. Don's holding up the shirt, Alan Reed's going, Yep, this happened. Yeah. Here's a photo of uh, Lane and Whitney Virgin from Virgin River Land and Cattle Company with us front row at the Idaho Spuds oh. hockey game. <laughs> and because uh, I forgot to include this last episode, too. Oh, that was such a fun day. Also, I got to say, my face looks so red in that. I had been like yelling and smiling so much that I think it rushed all the blood up to my I face. I was just hyper as hell. I right. screamed so much. I know my you throat did. got hoarse. And let's not forget <laughs> something else we should have mentioned last episode. The reason that attracted us to them in the first place was with every hat trick. Right. At a Spud Kings hockey game, Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company donates $500 to one of our favorite charities, the Snake River Animal Shelter. Yeah, I do love the Snake River Animal Shelter. And for that matter, the Idaho Falls Animal Shelter. I just love the animal shelters and the Bonneville County Humane Society too. Yeah. I like that theirs is in a thrift store because I think that's brilliant. You even do a bit on uh, 96.1 and 102.1 The Wolf mm -hmm. where you alternate back and forth between the two shelters with a pet. Yes, I do. I do. Wanna... Carly's Critters, is that what you call yeah, it? Yeah, so it's Carly's Critters, Cat of the week and dog of the week yeah yeah it, super cool it's one that's really special to me i really like that one mostly because then i get to look through all of the available critters and be like oh i could bring you home you could be my little baby there was one that i was looking at named gracie who just was so cute her mom had passed and she just needed a loving home but like also i already have three pets and i don't need another one you can't hug every kitty but i can adopt most of yeah, them it's heartbreaking i know listen at one point i had 16 pets and most of them were different species i know i can do it with a big enough house and then can we go down the rabbit foot rabbit hole? <laughs> yeah. You know what? Can okay. we? <laughs> yes. Because Kevin, a uh, longtime listener, Kevin, was actually passing us. And here's a picture of him passing us on his flight from New York to L.A. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was a little closer than that. <laughs> no. It's, and, and there you zoom in. You can see Idaho Falls in the distance. Oh, I love that. You know how it shows the in-flight map. Right. Yeah. I love those. Yeah. And he said, Mike, I heard you and Carly talking about rabbit's feet and how, so I thought, Mike thought that, um, as if you could get our voices confused. Mixed up. Right. Yeah. I would hope not. So I, I thought. I feel like mine is so feminine. <laughs> that because rabbits are. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because rabbits are quadrupeds. <laughs> And we were talking about Lucky Rabbit's feet. I was really surprised for Carl to tell me that, no, only the back ones are lucky. Mm -hmm. 
And Kevin said, Mike, as if he was sort of shaking me a little bit. <laughs> Mike, it's because the front paws are hands. Oh, they're the hands. The rabbit's feet <laughs> are, of course, the ones in the back. You know, that's kind of how I thought about them. <laughs> but I mean, that's how I that's how I talk to like my cats and my and my dog too. It's just right. But but yeah, but realistically like anatomically speaking, since they all touch the ground and walk their feet. Yes. But I get it now. But yeah, he's right. <laughs> Thank you, Kev. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One last follow-up and open-ended question from last week, are there do the, you know, prime makers of gummy bears, Haribo and Black Forest, do they have cinnamon bears? One would think that they should. The answer is no. Which is crap. Because honestly, far as cinnamon I could bears find, that big would be, would be would so much be better. Perfect, right? Because the big ones are too much. You know who does, surprisingly? Ooh. Jelly Belly. Oh, really? One of our favorite brands, apparently, on I this do, show. I do love Jelly Belly. I remember once when I was a kid, I went to Winco with my grandma. And you know how they have that bulk food section yes. with the Jelly Bellies yes. in it? Yes. So I was like, Grandma, can I get some jelly beans? And she's like, yeah, sure. And she wasn't really watching that close. I filled the thing with a pound of jelly beans. I think they were like $13 <laughs> worth of jelly beans. And oh. I was happy as a clam, but my granny was like, what did you do? That's a to the moon, Carly. <laughs> to the moon. She was she was a little <laughs> That's upset. a backhand from grandma. <laughs> well, and realistically, dude, I did not. Dude, that was like a fourth of my body weight at the oh, time. Sure. Well, <laughs> like, well, I did not need that many jelly beans. That's kind of what kids do. <laughs> right. And now right. you're cutting donuts in half. So now I am. have you improved? I have. I, I have. think you have. <laughs> I'm working on it every day. <laughs> to our point. <laughs> Anyway, but I was surprised. Yeah, I was surprised mm -hmm. that um, the main manufacturer of, of cinnamon bears. Can you guess the name? Because the minute I say it, you're going to be like, "Oh yeah." I mean, I don't pay much attention to cinnamon bears. Okay, right. You, yeah, we talked yeah. about that. <laughs> sweets. Oh, it's Sweets Candy Company. Great name for a candy company. Yeah. I mean, realistically. So it's not the people you would expect to make cinnamon bears, mm -hmm. like the ones that professionally make gummy bears, like, I don't know, Haribo or Haribo. I'm not sure how mm -hmm. you pronounce it, but I do know it's a- uh, Or a how you pronounce it? How, how what did I say? <laughs> so, no, no. I said that. I was oh. making a, a funny little portmanteau. Okay. Right. <laughs> don't mind me. Haribo, you pronounce it. <laughs> but I do know that they're there. Because I wondered at one point in my internet travels six months ago, who's, I like Black Forest. I also like Haribo. Who's the original? Mm -hmm. It's Haribo. Oh, really? Yes. And um, it's actually a combination of three people's names. Oh, kind of like Renesmee. Like, yeah. <laughs> like Harry... <laughs> Uh, Riz and Bo Burnham. I don't know, but it's three dudes. Harry and Bo with the Riz. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Sure. That's hilarious. And I love it. And also. Riz, Riz is also one of those things that if you have to say you have, you don't. Right. Like fame or classiness or trust. Okay. <laughs> Harry Styles and Bo Burnham would be the rizziest team to ever exist. <laughs> Only because I feel like they'd balance true, each other true. out well, but they're also like kind of sad. Like they're just skinny mm -hmm. white sad boys, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know? And also nothing says, I just picked this up at the Walgreens on my way home on February 14th, <laughs> than Sweets Candies. <laughs> uh, wait, Sweets are... is one of those brands that I, I don't think of as top quality, unless they're the ones... Mm -hmm. Aren't they the ones that make the raspberry sticks or the orange sticks? I don't think so. Because they're so good. Can I Google it? Google it real okay. quick, would you? But like sweets to me is, here's another one that just says, I don't really care about you or I'm 16. Russell Stover. <laughs> Russell I Stover. I think that's who makes the raspberry sticks. Not good chocolate fam. Just not good. Their little sampler. Whitman's is okay. They are sweets. The raspberry sticks and orange yeah. sticks. Whitman's. Uh, I could totally deal with Whitman's. I like Russell. I like Russell Stover. But Russell Stover. Stover I think nah, fine. Russell Stover. There's a confusion here in this market in particular, and I get it. Mm -hmm. When you're a family with 
you know, 13 kids. <laughs> You're not looking for quality. Oh, yeah. You're looking for quantity. Okay. Well, and it's funny you say that because the person who would always pick it up was my grandpa who had seven kids. Okay. So, of course, he was going with the big, big one. All right. So, Sweets We Know makes cinnamon bears, which I love, the uh, raspberry and orange sticks, which are fantastic. Now, that being said, if you are going to pick up some truffles for your love for Valentine's Day, might I suggest... That you check out Love at First Bite instead. Oh, for sure. Because theirs are top notch, just or delicious. Just, yeah, any brand above Russell Stover is going to be an improvement. It can even be lint, mm -hmm. which I don't like, except for those sherry filled mm -hmm. Bible study candies that Kevin brings for his mom. Those are amazing. Those are good. And honestly, their white chocolate truffles are so good. I know you don't like lint, but I love those. They're one of my favorite candies. Florence's is, I think, the best chocolate you can get here in town. Or the chocolate we mm -hmm. taste tested earlier. Oh, Thor's? Thor's oh. chocolate from Bean to the Bar made right Thor's. here with solar energy in Idaho Falls. Do y'all make truffles? Because if not, get on that, babes. <laughs> like, hurry up. <laughs> chop, chop. Valentine's Day's coming up. <laughs> And you know, if your sweetheart doesn't like uh, truffles or chocolate or anything, which I get because I'm also not a huge chocolate fan. I like white chocolate more because I'm a freak. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I bet you Cooking with Ken is doing some cute macarons. If We're putting him on the spot right now, but boy, I hope to watch his Facebook page and see that pop up soon. I hope so, too. I All hope right. they're cute and pink and heart-shaped. Oh, I can't wait. We... We've mostly done not news on this episode, which is why you love us. Yeah, no, we're not a news station. The, our promise to you, <laughs> not a lot of news. Not a lot of news you should trust. <laughs> trust us. Don't do the <laughs> grabby hands when you do it. Trust us. Here's someone I think we can trust. And I, and I believe it because I've been to their website. I've read the article. I've seen their metrics that they use. Mm -hmm. The Millican Institute. Yes. Did you hear about this? Idaho Falls. And it's either, I'm sorry, for the second time in three years or the third time in four years, I've seen conflicting articles, mm -hmm. has ranked uh, Idaho Falls as the number one small city in the best performing cities of uh, 2024 this year. That's amazing. Wait, 2024 or 2023? 2024, I think. I wow. think when they release the list. Well, now I don't know. That just seems like they're choosing But I really think it soon. is it is awards season. It is. That's true. And we rank things from it's like taxes. Right. When right. you're talking you're, to a CPA and you said I did something, I've got this for 2023, right. they say tax year 2023 or calendar year 2023. Right, right. That's a good point. So I don't know, I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. how cool is that? That's super cool. We deserve it. And that is why Weirdo Outsiders Millican Institute, your IFAF this week. Chris Pie 5, whoosh, 21 finger gun salute. Pew, pew, pew. pew. And, you know, mad Chef's props, kiss. big ups, chef's kiss to a podcast you've never heard of <laughs> and will never again. And you're also only getting chosen as IFAF because you recognize how great we are. But so that's, but that's thank what you we for do. that. <laughs> we love unconditionally. Okay. And sometimes we love reciprocally. Yeah. If you love us, we love you. And that's showbiz, babe. Because mm -hmm. we didn't get enough love in our childhood. Uh, the quote is, <laughs> and that's showbiz, kid. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. It's almost like I really like musical theater. <sighs> it's almost like you've listened to the Chicago soundtrack on repeat since it got canceled this year. I'm so sad about that still. You have bummer. no idea how much that hurt my heart. I just got my refund from the Idaho Falls um, Arts Council, and I was like, thank you, Idaho Falls Arts Council, mm -hmm. for totally totally reducing my Christmas bill to Carly by 154 bucks this year. <laughs> So, so what you going to do for me instead? Hey, listen, I already made it up to you on your birthday <laughs> and Valentine's Day is coming up. So maybe I'll get you some nice Russell Stover and you're going to have to be happy about it. Well, now I won't because you said it was bad. I'm kidding. I, I don't trust you. <laughs> I will never give you Russell Stover. That said, gentle <laughs> listener, if you're holding on to some Russell Stover in your little Valentine's bag for your Valentine, just give it 
I know it's fine. Uh, no, I actually I like Russell Stover. I think it's fine. Okay. You know? I actually I actually know some people who are like that's their favorite. Right. And and it might not be because it's good, mm-hmm. but because it's familiar. Yeah. Like you, you, know what? you got yeah. it once from your favorite boy in high school Aww. when they were handing out Valentine's. Oh, that didn't happen for me, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was a dork in high school. I never had a Valentine in high school. Have we ever thrown up your dorky uh, oh, junior high or, or high school picture? Oh, it was high school. No, not on this a, episode. I was a late bloomer, baby. <laughs> Let's save it. And so was I. Yeah. I didn't, that's not totally true. You were a really cute kid. You were a cute kid your entire time. But like, I didn't become like even remotely cute until I was like 17. (laughs) I was a late bloomer, baby. (laughs) Well, and speaking of Valentine's Day, right now the community food basket has the cutest little food drive name going on. It's called the Spread the Love Peanut Butter and Jelly Food Drive. Oh, because you spread peanut butter and you spread jelly and you spread love. Yeah, it's nice, right? That's cute. Yeah, I think it's super cute. Um, But basically, if you bring in a non-perishable food item, you get a raffle ticket. And if you bring in a peanut butter and a jelly, you get five raffle tickets, which is pretty cool. Uh, And they can include uh, wristbands to the Highway 30 Music Festival and Country Fan Fest, a family pass visit to the Wilderness Ridge Trail Llamas, which I would love to do, by the way. Oh, you! if if we don't win, we'll go anyway. I just love llamas. Yeah. I love their big, long necks. (laughs) Have you ever seen a llama kiss a llama on a llama, (laughs) llama, llama, ding? Uh, Tickets to the Spud Kings, which I would also love because that was a ball. (laughs) Or I guess a puck. (laughs) But (laughs) Uh, guns and Gear, Bob's Indoor Golf, Gnarly Escapes, and more. Uh, and basically, the deadline for that is February 14th, Valentine's Day. So get your donations in at the uh, Inner West Moving and Storage off of Yellowstone and Idaho Falls. And that just makes Spread the Love all more adorable because the deadline is on Valentine's Day. Right. Isn't that cute? Nice job, guys. <gasps> oh, for Valentine's Day, you and your Valentine could go donate some peanut butter and jelly, which reminds me of that one song, the like... I'm peanut butter and you are jelly and we're so happy on our little piece of bread. Never heard that, <laughs> but it sounds fascinating. I so, mean, it's acapella, so you'd love it. Uh huh. As long as it's not pentatonics. I, I kind of like pentatonics. I know you do. Straight Note Chaser is far superior. And yeah, those, those are two things that go together like peas and carrots, <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> right, cute. Right. Super cute. Oh, I want to go. Okay, you just reminded me of something, and I want to go back to this. Remember when we were talking about baseballism on Instagram and how oh, I yeah. ordered their Idaho Taters t shirt? Yeah. The guy who sent it to me, I want to give him some mad props real quick. His name is Craig Ferguson? No, can't be. Craig, we're going to call him by his Instagram handle, Craig Flopdoodle. Craig, that is a great name. He's the one who not only sent me the link, mm-hmm. just with zero context. I love that. Uh, but then after I was like, hell yeah, buddy. Thank you for showing me that. I've ordered it. Mm-hmm. He uh, also said, I love your podcast, by the way. Oh, that's nice. Now, you've heard Consider the Source, I right? Got, I kind of expected him to be like, oh, well, now that you bought it, here's my affiliate link. Right. <laughs> kidding, kidding. But but if um, somebody you don't know, has you've never heard of, and is like 12 years old, says, I love your podcast, it's like, okay, cool, thanks, bro. Right, yeah. But for him to love our podcast, he is hilarious. He is the man and, and he actually, I am reminded of something he came up with that spread like wildfire throughout the station. Oh, yeah? He'd say it in meetings. He'd say it on the air. Shank my dank. <laughs> now, what does that mean exactly? What does shank my dank mean? It has zero meaning. Like kill my cool. Or, or something. But I asked him about it once. Because he would say it in response to, yo, bro, I put that production order in your inbox and, you know, when you can get to it, but they'd like it sooner rather than later. Shank my dank. Oh, it's basically like, thank you. Or or he, something. It's kind of like what I do with Rango, where I go from Rangy to Rangy Dangy to Dangy Doo to uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Rang Dangster to Bo Gangster <laughs> to Gangster. <laughs> yeah. And he said it was an impression of a former coworker. Man, if I remembered any of my linguistics classes from college, I would be able to tell you why that is, but I don't remember anything. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Just uh, shank my dank, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you one time, how come you're coo? Yeah. When, when we go to your house for family dinner, mm-hmm. um, your mom was like, hey, coo, can you grab the water? Yeah. And like after two years now, it's been two and mm-hmm. a half. I think we just celebrated our two and a half anniversary. We did. And I said, so uh, how did coo come about? And you told me it's because your brother mm-hmm. didn't couldn't say Carly, yeah. So he said Coo. Well, because he was only a, a year and a half years old. Yeah, a year and a half years old. He you were only, you were uh, Irish twins or almost. I mean, yeah. So my mom was. Uh, so I was born when Tyson was nine months old. So, like, yeah, <laughs> very yeah. little spread there, right? You know, etymology is freaking fascinating. It is. It really is. It is. And honestly, I kind of love all these random new slang words that the kids are like. We just mentioned Riz earlier, you know, and that's the thing. I've Which never, is short for charisma, if you don't know. I did not know, but in context, I understood what they were saying. Right. He got that Riz. Yeah. Honestly, brilliant. Also, makes me like kind of hopeful for the return of D&D because charisma is one of the categories. Yes, it is. Roll for charisma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I, I have noticed a big trend of D&D coming back Yeah. as we become more and more godless heathens. So I, any minute we're going to have another oh, satanic yeah. panic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Growing up, D&D was like <laughs> kids killing each other in the streets of New York, and it's all because of D- Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, no. It's... And I was, even, even as a savvy 10-year-old, I was like, no, that's not why. No, though, you know, if anything, you should encourage your kids to play D and D because it means oh. that they're going to save virgins for so long. So long. <laughs> you won't have to deal with any teenage pregnancies. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Speaking of virgins, no, do you know? I didn't realize this, but like half or three quarters of the board of the Snake River Radio Players started out as D and D friends. Really? They'd get together once a week. And there's another pastor I know, another minister, Ryan. Well, now I'm mad that I'm not part of it. Yeah, right? Rude. Yeah, Carly wants it. Koo wants in on that. (laughs) I'd be down. Koo wants in on your (laughs) D&D. Sentences I'd never thought I'd say, certainly not on an almost live podcast, (laughs) video podcast. Huh. (coughs) What a time to be alive. (laughs) And I guess we've got some tea here. Herbal or verbal? (laughs) Verbal. I guess people are complaining on the socials about the smell of one Idaho Falls business, Intermountain Packing. Oh. Uh, What are are they packing? Well, (laughs) a meat, apparently. (laughs) That sounds about right. They're at 1096 East Iona Road. Oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. What's that near? I, I believe that's, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I believe that's their new building. I've okay. seen where their old building is, but I just saw like a couple of people complaining about how like it's, dude, it's totally unbearable. So I thought hmm. we would, before we spread rumors, mm-hmm. we'd actually go there and, and give it a good sniff. Well, and especially in the cold, I have to assume that it's got to be better than it's going to be in the summer. Right. Are we in for a, a smell-a-thon, some smell vision Ooh. Yikes. I well, don't and know. that worries me too, because like my parents live not super close to there, but in that, you know, maybe five mile vicinity, like if the wind's blowing a certain way, is it gonna be stinky? Well, and that's why I was so surprised to see Ryder Park being built where it was, because now right. they're up to, you know, two fishing ponds and a sled hill. Mm-hmm. But that's right next to a sewage treatment plant that sometimes gets pretty stinky in the summer. Right. Or if the wind blows just right, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Again, I don't even know. If this is just what I read posts, and we'll, we'll even put them up. Here's the Facebook post that I saw, mm-hmm. and I so it doesn't amount to slander or anything like that. We're just reporting what the people say. Just in case there's any question, there's there's we don't talk a lot of shit unless other people are talking a lot of shit. Right. We're not exactly reporters, but that's what we do, is we watch the trends and tell you about them. I mean, yeah, we are reporters, but we're more like gossip reporters. <laughs> like, okay. Gossip columnists. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, like like Bridgerton, Lady Whistledown. Yes. Yes, exactly. Oh, we, we put our faces on it. 
That's true. Yeah. We'll own it. <laughs> we, don't, we don't hide behind no quill. <laughs> In this case, there's, yeah, there's no way to be anonymous on the yeah. internet anymore. <laughs> I mean, not really. It's all going to come out anyway. Yeah. Oof. Yikes. <laughs> That's terrifying, but it's fine. <laughs> Speaking of, it's all going to come out. I, I want to, we're getting to the end of our show, but I did want to mention this first. You got a very nice Christmas present. I did. It's called the Trauma Chihuahua. <laughs> and would you like to explain the principle behind it? Okay, so at my friend's house, there was a trauma tiger. Currently, it's in my house. <laughs> I felt the need to kidnap it because <laughs> we were going to have a party at my house. It got left there. Anyway, now it currently resides at my place because I kind of refuse to give it up. Well, first, let's talk about how the trauma tiger itself came to be. It's a, just so you know, it's a golden tiger, less than a foot long, seated. It's a very nice figurine, some might say. Yeah, yeah. It's something that I think she found at like TJ Maxx of all places. Okay, yeah. You know, uh, where you get kitschy stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, yeah, we were all having a party, sitting around. I guess someone was holding the trauma tiger in their lap, and they were just like booing about something. And... Uh, I think it was me who started it. Okay. I'm going to take the credit. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. <laughs> but I was like, oh, you've got the trauma tiger, so you can go ahead and talk. And then someone else started saying it. And I was like, no, you got to pass the trauma tiger. And First, so like, we started passing it. Like and, the tradition of a talking stick. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like who, whoever's holding the talking stick sort of has the floor. Right, exactly. L yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. But, but it was a real... He surprisingly healing. We weren't playing port board games. This was after dinner. Yeah. Six to eight of us, if I remember. Yeah. And uh, it was a real healing sort of night of laughter. It was really funny. And we haven't done it since, but it was all thanks to the Trauma Tiger. I think we did it once again after that, but half-heartedly. Okay. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, basically we passed the trauma tiger around the circle and everyone told a trauma and it was actually kind of nice. It was a nice moment. And the best part was how many people infuse so much humor into their trauma, yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, right. And here's the thing. I felt the need to, when it came to my house for a party, just not say anything when I noticed that it was left behind. <laughs> Right? And so it's been staying at my house for a while. So I believe the person who actually has ownership of the trauma tiger yeah. got you for Christmas a trauma chihuahua. <laughs> and here it is. <laughs> she did. In hopes of getting her trauma tiger back. Yeah. And, I, don't, and, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I do think that the trauma chihuahua is a sufficient replacement. It is. And if anything, it's kind of funnier because then you can sit there with it in your lap and stroke its head like a Bond villain. While you tell your trauma, yes. which is exactly what they would do, let's be honest here. Yeah. Like, if any of Bond's villains didn't, like, stroke his cat and, like, boob to one of his minions about all of the terrible things his daddy did to him, uh, unrealistic. Well, and it's a nice conversation <laughs> piece, too, because if somebody walks into your house, say, for a cup of tea. Right. And says, what's that? You can say, it's the trauma chihuahua. <laughs> And then you suddenly became twice as interesting. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> trauma Chihuahua. What? <laughs> well, and if I'm being honest, I do think that Trauma Chihuahua has a better ring to it than Trauma Tiger. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and also, realistically, I mean, every Chihuahua looks like it's been through just so much trauma, you know? like <laughs> Right. They shiver and they shake. And yeah. honestly, Carly, when I'm not feeling my best... When They're kind of traumatizing. When I'm <laughs> shivering and shaking, the last thing I want is some shivering and shaking animal kind of looking at me with his big buggy <laughs> eyes going, are you doing okay too? <laughs> no, I'm not. Quit looking at me like that. You weirdo. <laughs> anyway, I love that you got a trauma chihuahua for Christmas. Yeah, and, it was great. And this is how those weird family traditions start. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think so. You have to tell an hour-long story just to get to the <laughs> origin of the thing they're looking at. Yeah. Now, you introduced a movie to me that's coming out in the weirdest way that I wouldn't have expected. You said, oh, hey, did you hear that Emily Blunt's husband is directing another movie? <laughs> Oh, you mean Jim from The Office, like the rest of society refers to him as? How dare you? John Krasinski, Jack Ryan. <laughs> yeah. And they're coming out with uh, a movie with an interesting <laughs> name. And the minute we say it, you'll be like, oh, yeah. Uh, the <laughs> no movie, wonder they're talking about that. <laughs> the movie, the title looks like IF in all caps. So perhaps it could be pronounced IF. 
As in IFAF. And that's what I thought. Like, but no, <laughs> IF stands for spoiler alert, imaginary friends. And it's got John Krasinski in it, Ryan Reynolds, Steve Carell. Whom I love, by the way. And e- even Emily v- Blunt voices. There's a bunch of actors who voice characters, uh-huh. which I assume are all imaginary friends. Right, right. Well, and you read the summary, and basically the idea is that a little girl realizes that she can see other people's imaginary friends, and she realizes that her neighbor can too. Yes, right. She's got one, her neighbor has one, mm-hmm. and I suppose hilarity ensues yeah. in theaters May 17th. Which makes me feel a lot better about it because when I first heard about it, and also, I mean, so John Krasinski did that, uh, oh, what's that sound-based scary movie, the one with- A Quiet Place. A Quiet Place. So that was his like big debut directorial And Emily Blunt thing. was great in that. Oh, she was so good. Yeah. She was so good. Um, but the point is, I was kind of expecting it to be scary. And then I heard the synopsis and I'm like, oh, okay. So this is like a lighthearted, family-friendly comedy dramedy, maybe? Yeah, it kind of sounds kind of cute. Yeah, it seems a little artsy-fartsy in a fun way. And I wonder if they get to, say, there's an IF, which there will be May 17th. And then there's going to be an IF2 and then an IF3. Will there there be an IFAF? Will there, you know, IF Imaginary Friends Always Forever? There we go. <laughs> It'll be interesting. We've already talked about our other, not nemesis, but- um, Our other namesake. Yes. Idaho Falls Advertising Federation. Yeah, which I'm so Are we going to have for. some, and if they ever want to do a podcast about it, it's going to be the IFAF pod. Right, uh, right. Maybe well, that's our retirement plan. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we'll just sell it. <laughs> have we talked about your unethical life hack that you witnessed, you believe, this week? And we'll end on this. Okay, well, to be fair, I don't know if I witnessed it so much as I came up with it after witnessing something that I think would explain what I came up with. Okay. That sounds really roundabout. (laughs) Well, no, sometimes I do that too. Like the two ducks story, remember me telling you, I make up stories in my head about Mm -hmm. why that happened. Right. Okay. So basically what happened was that I was driving behind a car that had a bumper sticker, probably a magnet, that said, uh, student driver, please be patient. Which, fair and fine. I totally get it. And honestly, there are lots of times when I really wish when I was a student driver or just starting, I would have had a sticker like that because I definitely could have used a little more patience. It kind of reminds me, though, of the old-fashioned baby on board yield signs. Right. Where it's like, be gentle around my car, please, because there's a baby in here. You know what? I'm going to treat you like everybody else, which is... Gentle and kind. Well, but do you know why that actually is there? Why? It's so that if you're in an accident, they look for the baby. Yeah, I don't think that's right. You can Google it. Maybe I will. Okay, I think you should. There's a follow-up for next week. Yeah, but basically it's so that if they see your car in an accident, they'll look for the baby. Okay. Because they're so easy to miss. I mean, I certainly like that idea better. Right, right. Than posturing and expecting everybody around you to treat you specially. Yeah, because you have a baby. Yeah. Yeah. So they had this student driver sticker on their bumper. And I thought it was brilliant because I was like, man, I wish I would have had that back in the day. But then I watched how they drove and it was like real bad. I'm like, okay, I know when I just finished learning how to drive, I was like really careful and precise because I wanted to be as close to the rules as I could be. And this person, whoever, well, I found out who they were, but (laughs) they were like hugging that line so tightly that their wheel was on the center line. And were they an actual student driver? Okay, well, here's the thing. The whole time I watched them, I was like, This person's driving like they're drunk more than a student. I pull up beside them at a stoplight, look over. She looks like she's like 40. Wow. There's no way that this is a student. Either this is their parent driving their kid's car or the car that they let their kid drive. And they're just that bad of a driver, which makes me terrified for the kid that they're producing (laughs) because that driver is going to be just the worst. But if you were a cop, you would have 
cited them for inattentive or aggressive driving. Something. Yeah. Something. Because they kept like, like they were just on the line in the, like they were on the center line the entire time. They were like drinking and texting. <laughs> Almost, you know, <laughs> and they kept kind of bopping between the lines. Like they weren't really staying totally like they, wow. they stayed in the lane, but they weren't staying in the same position in the lane. And were her license plates one J just asking? No, that's the other thing that kind of made me mad. <laughs> because that's the baby on board sign <laughs> right. or student driver sign for that's me. That's the indicator one J, I need. <laughs> give them wide berth. Oh, we've talked about it before. Don't come at me. Just the other day, I ran into a truck with a one J. A, uh, license plate uh-huh. that was driving like such an idiot and he kept leaving like three car lengths when he would stop yeah. which like I get leaving a car Yikes. length and a half or even a car length or something like that like leave a buffer sure three car lengths dude my, like what are you doing if, to the point where there was like a turning lane right next to him if he would have scooched up one foot I could have gotten in but he wouldn't because he was being a dumb one J who wasn't paying attention to his surroundings. Ooh, we're, so mad. We're going to take some time right now for those non-Idahoans who still listen and either didn't know this or forgot about this. The Idaho State Vehicle License Registration Nomenclature System includes a number and a letter to indicate what county the vehicle was licensed in. For example, 1A would be Ada County, which really means Boise. Right. 8B would be Bonneville County, which really means Idaho Falls. So 1J is Jefferson County, which really means Rigby. And in Rigby, there's just a slower speed of life. And it's sometimes a little more stimulation than they're used to, to pay attention to more than, say, two lanes of traffic at a time. I just feel like they are not very aware of the things going on around them. Just saying. It could happen. I hate to stereotype people, but I will say it's a world famous known fact that 1J drivers can be dangerous outside of Rigby. Right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You know what? Don't live up to your stereotype then. Right. Do, be- do better. You have the option. Right. Okay? Eventually, if all of you choose to do that, the stereotype will disappear. Until you choose to do that, it'll stay there. So... So to finish the story, you had just pulled up next to her and clocked her. And realized that she was at least an adult. Yeah. Maybe she had gotten her license late. I don't know. I do know people around here who didn't learn to drive till they were 25. Sure. Yeah. Fine. Maybe she's one of them. But then I noticed she had a can in her hand. And <laughs> at first I was like, have I been taken for a fool? And I was like, okay, is, is this four chick- loco? I was kind of wondering. White Claw Surge. I was kind of wondering, is this chick drinking and driving with this student driver <laughs> sticker so that she doesn't get pulled over? And then I realized it was a Diet Coke. Like, okay. I, I could right. see the logo. It was definitely a Coke. There was no question there. Well, but that's the thing about cans. They're not see-through. You can put whatever you want in there. Well, yeah, but who's going to use a funnel to do that? I know. That you sounds know, that that's a little diabolical like a on my bottle, part. sure. But like a, a can, dumb. Especially because you can't even like screw the top on. So pro tip, life but, hack. If you anyway, if you want people to forgive you and not report you to the cops, whether it's texting driver. or drinking, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not that we're we are not but, saying that you should do crimes. No, but you're right. <laughs> when you first introduced this topic to me, you said, "Is this an unethical life hack?" Because there's like pages and pages of them on the right. internet. I was mostly just wondering if I'd been had. <laughs> right. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Well, that's our show. Thanks so much for listening. Give us a like or a subscribe. Tell a friend when you can, because that's what's going to keep us going. Your love and kindness and your MGK sustains us, and we really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Remember, as spring approaches, as if it hasn't already. I know, right? And you know somebody who's about to make a move in the next 12 months, meaning sell their home or buy a home or even invest in real estate. Mm-hmm. We're your guys, Mike Nelson, Carly Morgan. Our brokerage information is on Facebook. And thank you. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.